Doctor, once you had COVID-19 and you went back to work on the front lines, did you consider yourself immune at that point because you would have generated the antibodies that we were talking about with our first guest, uh, having had the disease and what Dr. Glanville is talking about creating? Sure. Well, that's the, that's the million dollar question that everyone working in hospitals really wants to know. Uh, so for myself, we don't really have any evidence of that yet. And until we really get good antibody testing and know what that means, I consider myself uh, susceptible as anyone else. So I continue to protect myself as much as possible. Okay. And you've been back on the front lines how long? In the last, uh, in the last two weeks. So you've been back on two weeks and so far you're okay. Thank God. Yeah. So, yeah. um, now, this procedure that you do, uh, is this used just on patients who ventilators can't help, or can it also be used if there just aren't enough ventilators? No, so it's, so it's a, so ECMO, as you described it, it takes the blood out of a patient and runs it through an oxygenator to add in oxygen, take out carbon dioxide. And it's used for people who are suffering from profound respiratory failure or lung failure or cardiac failure. Um, so for illnesses like COVID-19, where patients have severe respiratory failure, we're using it to basically serve the, the function of the patient's own lungs. Um, so in the current epidemic, it's really reserved for patients who are on ventilators, who are failing maximal support with conventional means of treatment for this. Uh, just similar to, it was actually the resurgence of ECMO came in 2009 after the H1N1 swine flu pandemic. And have you had a number of patients on it so far? I do have a handful on myself, yes. Uh huh. And how are they doing? They're doing okay. They're, as you can imagine, they're very, very sick. Um, and they were so sick that they required to go on ECMO that we wouldn't offer this to someone who really, we didn't think that this was a treatment of last resort, where we felt that with just conventional ventilator management alone, they had a high risk of dying. And how was your particular journey through COVID-19? How long did you have it and how bad did it get for you? So thankfully for me, it wasn't, it wasn't super severe. Obviously, <clears throat> I, uh, I presented feeling like I was getting a flu, uh, being that I was spending a lot of time in the hospital, exposed to a lot of patients with the disease. Um, you know, I took precautions. When, I, when I, my symptoms didn't go away, I got myself tested, which I was luckily able to get tested and my test results came back as positive. So I stayed out of the hospital and stayed away from work and was quarantined at home. Um, thankfully, my symptoms resolved relatively uh, uneventfully and I was able to come back to work. And once you, once you did get back to work, were you, did you have the energy that you did before or did it take a while to get back up to speed? Yeah, so I wouldn't say I was feeling 100%, but I definitely felt okay to go back to work and actually I put someone, a patient on ECMO my first day back in the hospital. Oh, wow. And you've heard us talking to Dr. Glanville. And, and Dr. Glanville, my, my question for you uh, about this situation where he, I, I was just asking the doctor if he felt like uh, he was protected after having the disorder. And he said, well, of course, that's the, the big question everybody has. Uh, based on your experience and approach to this, is he likely immune? Well, the, the reason the doctor's saying that is that, again, this is a rapidly evolving set of data. We're all trying to get a handle on a novel outbreak and the behavior of this virus. What we do know is that most patients after recovery develop antibodies and they develop T cell responses. So these are the two types of adaptive immune responses, the kind of things that protect you from say, chicken box. But we've also seen some cases of people that seem like they get infected again, or the other possibility is that they actually never fully cleared the virus and it just popped up again and, then, and the test detected it later. And that's a little concerning to us because it gives rise to the question of, you know, is this like chickenpox where you get it and then you're protected or are you potentially still susceptible? Uh, we know in, in hamsters, if they receive the plasma from recovered patients that they don't get sick. So it seems like antibodies could help in a hamster, but you know, humans aren't hamsters. So, we're definitely keeping an eye on this. The, the assumption would be because they have antibodies in most patients and they have good T cells that we assume that people aren't gonna become reinfected, but there've been these exception cases coming out of Korea and a couple other places that have made us worry that maybe we don't establish 100% protection or that the virus is much harder to clear from our bodies than we're anticipating. 